business that we committed word, Lord, or deed in the name of Jesus. We come to lift your name on high today because you are worthy and mighty, God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. We thank you, God, for what you already done. We ask, Lord, that you just bless us from our head to our feet in the name of Jesus. And we will give your name the honor and the glory because you are worthy, God, and awesome, God, a mighty God. We thank you and we glorify your name. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace because you are an awesome and mighty God. We glorify your name because you're worthy, God. We thank you, God. We glorify you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And at this time, we want to say thank you. And at this time, we welcome Corey, Pastor Corey L. Simpson of the New Antioch International Church. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 Amen.
Odom, amen. Amen. And give the honor to my wonderful church. Amen. We're going to hear this Sunday morning. Amen. amen. Okay, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 7, verse number 18. Let's go to 7, 18. 7 and 18. 7 and 18. Amen. Verse 7 and 18. We also want to give thanks to all of our online viewers, amen, who are viewing us every Sunday morning, <laughs> amen, and throughout the week. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and we hope that the word of God can speak to your heart, your mind, body, and soul, that you can be all God has called you to be, amen, in these last days. Thank God for our members, amen, the congregation who are here this Sunday morning, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I know the Lord has a word for the church, amen. Amen. Verse 17 reads as us. it says, if anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. Who He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus goes on to say, Did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you kept the law? Amen. Why do you seek to kill me, says Jesus? The people answered and said, you have a demon who is seeking to kill you. Jesus answered and said to them, I did one work, and you all marveled. Moses, therefore, gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the Father. And you circumcised a man on the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. amen. We thank the Lord for this word. We ask for revelation. Amen. Go deeper than what we could ever imagine. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for everything you have done in our lives. Continue to make ways for our provisions. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So this morning, I want to speak to you on the subject of everything has its expiration date. Amen. amen. No matter what goes on in our life, everything must expire sometime, someday. Amen. It, it, it may last a little bit longer for some things, and some things may last only a day, but everything must expire at some time. Amen. For instance, when I go to reset a password for one of my email accounts, it gives me a single password that can expire within three hours. Amen. amen. And then I may buy a gallon of milk that may give me a week, amen, to use. And if I buy something that's organic, I may get even two weeks out of it. But there are some things such as oil in our car that gives us a couple thousand miles before it expires. Amen. Oh, Everything have a expiration. Amen. Amen. I was looking online the other day and I noticed that there was a bridge been built in another city. And they said this bridge should live no longer than 100 years. And that lets me know that sometimes, even though it may last for a certain amount of time, that it's always going to have the expiration date. Amen. The fact is, although the bridge is going to live 100 years, it must develop people who is going to be able to take care of that bridge when that 100-year mark comes. Amen. So although there are expirations, expiration dates on every single thing we have, we must understand that we need people in order to continue those things to continue on, even after the date of his expiration. Simply saying that when it breaks or when something happens to it and begins to decay, you need somebody who can repair the item or uh, prepare, me, uh, repair the broken uh, thing, whatever it is. Amen. Mm -hmm. If I'm getting the words out of the way, they should be. So everything has an expiration date. So I'm looking back at uh, John 7, and I'm looking at Jesus when he's talking to the men. He's telling them about uh, the Father speaking, and if he's speaking, amen, then you should know if it's the Father speaking or if it's Jesus speaking on his own authority. So he goes on to even include Moses in this situation. He says, Moses has given you the law, but yet the people cannot keep the law. But here I am trying to fulfill the law, and yet you want to kill me. The response to Jesus from the man is that you have a demon that is trying to kill you. But the fact is, even though, see, oh, hallelujah. Anytime you're doing the will of God, you attract the enemy. 
Amen. So we must understand that. Get it out of the way right now. Anytime we're doing the will of God, we attract the enemy. We Amen. attract the opposite things from Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why things come and things go. But God, God plans for the prosper, but the enemy plan is to tear us down. That's why the Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal our minds. Amen. He comes to kill us and destroy us. Mm -hmm. But the one thing we must understand, as long as we keep our mind focused on Christ Jesus, everything will be all right. That's why the Bible records it must be renewed by our mind, amen. amen. That's our mind plays an important part in our body, amen. amen. If our mind is not working, the body cannot work, amen. amen. The mind tells the hand to move. The mind tells the feet to move. The mind tells you when you touch or something to grasp hold of it. That's what the mind is used for. It's used to control the body. That's why Jesus is telling us quite often in the scriptures is that we must be renewed by our mind. Amen. Uh -huh. So therefore, if a man is made new, he's made new through his mind. Amen. Because your mind you must choose to turn from the wicked ways and follow Christ. Amen. The mind plays an important role inside of our daily living. Amen. And the fact of the matter is sometimes our minds begin to expire as well. As I said, that everything oh, has an expiration oh, date. Amen. amen. The Bible records too, it says, once an adult and twice a child. Amen. Oh, so man. therefore, we are born a child. We'll be going through our adult stages. And once again, we begin to act like a child again. Not because we want to, but because our mind is now expiring. Amen. amen. So amen. everything has an expiration date. Amen. Yes. Even the clothes you wear has a date to expire. Amen. Yes. You don't know what that date is. But you begin to see the clothes begin to fall apart, amen. Yes, that yes. means it's expiring. Mm -hmm. And then we, we we get fruit in the basket and we notice that one is beginning to decay and to, and to expire and it ends up taking a whole basket with it, amen. Yes. So the best thing to do when you have a fruit that's not what it needs to be, if it's not uh, if it's not in a good eating, if it's not in a, uh, um, a position to be eaten, you must throw it away or it will tear up everything inside the basket. Amen. And it, it brings to my next point. It says, the Bible records, and it says, let the wheat and the terror grow together. Yes. And on the day of separation, he will do the separating. Amen. Simply saying is that the wheat and the terror, the terror is nothing but these weeds growing around the wheat. Amen. Yes. But if you go and pluck the, the terror up out the ground, you begin to tear the wheat out the ground. And the wheat is what the people used to eat. And the wheat is what the people used to, to, uh, to pluck up and to gain money. Amen. To buy certain things like yes. milk eggs and all the and chickens uh -huh. and ducks and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So the wheat and the tarot are growing, growing together in the same field. Uh -huh. Amen. And amen. they're growing, amen. But if you go and take out the, the tarot, then you tear up the wheat. But somebody say lead the wheat. Lead away, amen. So let's right. look at it like this. We're looking at the, the, the center and the saints, amen, that's amen. growing together. And we look around and we see each other every single day, amen. Uh -huh. But if God was to come back right now, only the wheat will be able to go with him. Because he's coming back looking for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Amen. Or, or, and, and a wrinkle. And you got to understand that it's better to live for God because you never know what time he's coming back, amen. amen. Last Sunday, I, I preached a message called uh, Waiting or Patiently Waiting. Uh, and, and it was talking about how the, 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 the ten virgins came with their lamps, amen, and were waiting on the bridegroom to come past so they could go with him to the feast. But it was five who had all the oil plus their lamps, amen. But it was five who did not have enough oil, but they had their lamps. But the ones who had enough oil in their left were able to go with the bridegroom. But the ones who were not prepared had to wait for another time, if there were another time. But we know that in the book of Revelation, it says that Jesus is going to come back for us, this church. And he's going to take us to heaven, amen. Amen. And then he's going to give one more chance for the ones who did not desire to know him to change their mind. Okay. But how many know I'd rather be called with God the first time than to sit on this earth and endure the pain, the prosecution that the people have to go through because they did not call on the name of Jesus. That's why it's important, thanks of God, to live a sanctified life right now. Because amen. we never know when Jesus is going to return. 
can't even, God even said that Jesus don't even know the time or the hour that God's going to send him back. And, and the bad thing about it, thanks to God, if we do not know the time or the day that God is going to send Jesus back, then we will not be prepared for what God is trying to do on that great day of tribulations, amen, on that great day, amen, when God is going to come back and, and get us before this great day of tribulations. Uh -huh. amen. I hope I'm talking to somebody this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus is saying, he's saying to them, you want to kill me because I'm doing the will of my father. Uh -huh. And I was reminded too when uh, Jesus was lost, amen, and his mom went back to find him. Uh -huh. And he said, his mom said, what were you doing, Jesus? Uh -huh. And Jesus said, I was about my father's business. Amen. Anytime somebody asks you what you're doing, they say, I'm about my father's business. Right, because man. it's just about doing the will of God upon yeah. this earth. Can't nobody do what God has called you to do. Yes. God has a purpose and a plan for us all. Amen. Amen. If we follow that plan and that purpose, we got to understand that we are trapping the enemy. And I said it again. We are going to attract the enemy. Yes. The enemy's going to come and steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. He's going to try to destroy your mind. He's going to try to destroy your body. But one thing he cannot destroy is your soul. Yes. Because your soul yes. belongs to the Father above. Yes. And he says, touch not my anointed. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the flesh, he, the, the flesh is not anointed. Amen. It's Amen. the Spirit of God that's inside of me. Amen. It's how much you let the Spirit of God inside of you. Amen. Uh -huh. it, it, it's about the power of God that's inside of you that makes you anointed. Amen. Yeah, it ain't yeah, because yeah. I just go and bow my head to God. It's because I let God come inside of me. Amen. Yeah. It's the Spirit of God that dwells on the inside of us that's that right. gives us the power over the enemy. That's that gives right. us the power over circumstances. Amen. That gives us power to pray at night. That gives us power to pray in the morning. Yeah. It's the Spirit of God. God, and it was uh -huh. utterance of tongues, amen. It's the spirit of God. It's like the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, uh -huh. where the souls were up in the upper room, yeah. and the wind, the, and, and the spirit came in like a, a mighty Russian wind. Yeah. It was nothing but the power of God. Yeah. And then the people began to say, I don't know what they're doing up there, but I hear them speaking in some kind of unknown tongue. Oh, yeah. See, can't nobody understand when God is speaking through you or to you. It's two type of tongues that God has given us. It's ones that man can understand and one between just you, God, and the Spirit. Amen. And then sometimes when God is speaking through us, He don't give us the words to say, but He give us something like how to go she calls shot and I see. And that's speaking the tongues to God. I don't quite understand what it means, but I know one thing about it. If God speaking through me, and Anytime God is speaking through me, I can receive power from the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Anytime that God is talking through me, I can tell you about your life. Anytime God is speaking through me, I can give you a prophecy. Yeah. Because the Bible says he will cause men to prophesy unto you, to tell you about your life. That's why it's important to have a preacher who's anointed and appointed for the purpose. Because they can help you along the way. I'd rather be walking with a man or woman of God than sitting and sit beside this conference. I'd rather walk with a woman or a man of God than to be sitting and seeing, trying to fit in. I'd rather be walking with God than trying to do the will of the enemy. Because the will of the enemy leads to destruction. But the will of God leads to righteousness. The will of God leads to the kingdom of heaven. The will of God leads me from temptation. And it leads me down the path of righteousness. And it leads me from the enemy's door. It leads me. It protects me. The will of God. Anytime you are in the will of God, you are protected. If I had the protection around you, you may go through some things. But there's protection around you. You may got to cry sometimes. But there's protection around you. That's why you cry sometimes. God will tell you to drive Tears. No need to cry over something you can't change. I have all power in my hands, says the Lord. I'm all different. I can be one place and another thing at the same time. Dry them tears. No need to cry. Dry them tears. No more pain. Dry them tears. I'm here, says the Lord of hosts. Dry those tears. Sometimes, but he understood that he's about his father's will. Amen. 
And he even said to God, he says, God, he says, Father, I'm going through so much. I'm paraphrasing. He says, God, I'm going through so much. He says, I don't know if I can continue doing what you have called me to do. Because it's getting so hard. And I'm beginning to get weak and fatigued. And I'm beginning to I don't want to do it no more, Father. I don't know if I want to walk up that mountain, ran across. It probably way more than I do. I don't know if I can get the strength, Father. Because I'm struggling day by day. These last few days have been, uh, it's been tough. And I feel like I just need to uh, give up. But God, if it's, if it's your will, then I would do it. He says, I, I do your will, Father. That's the mindset we must have. That no matter how hard it gets in our life, we will do the will of God. Yes, 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 yes. The, the will of God is not to destroy us, but it's to perfect us. In a sense. Amen. You know, we always hear no one is perfect. We all have come short sometimes day by day. But the more you endow yourself in Christ, mm -hmm. the more you begin to get in the word of God, yes. you will find yourself changing some of the things you do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some of the bad habits you had, you will look back and say, wait a minute, I haven't done that in a long time. Mm -hmm. It was the power of God. Amen. So we see that now Jesus is, is, is now taking upon him, taking the sin of this world upon him. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to now go to this place where he is going to be crucified. Amen. So he's carrying his cross, trying to make it to the top of the mountain. And he feels like his strength is gone. Mm -hmm. We all feel like we're climbing mountains today. Mm -hmm. We feel like every time we try to get past one little point, something else is coming all in right, our lives. All right, all right. But it is okay. Right. Amen. God will make a way. Yes, Amen. Amen. On Friday, he had to get some issues taken care of. But guess what? God made a way. That's right. God provided for his son. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Amen. you have to remember that nothing in your life is happening <clears throat> without a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And God has a plan for every single thing in our lives. Amen. So it reminds me that no matter what I got going on, mm -hmm. I will be okay. Amen. So I've learned over time and I've learned over the years that God has a plan that is much bigger than mine. Yes, yes. I used to yes. want, I said, God, I've been going through this and that, and God says everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. But I said, God, why me? And God says to me, why not you? Because yes. you can endure the test that nobody else can go through, and there's something inside of you that people need, but they can't get from anybody else but you, so why not you? So I begin to say, God, well, I thank you for everything Amen. you got going on in my life. Amen. I thank you for every prosecution, every word that came up against me, every trial that came my way, every tribulation that came my way. I thank you for every tear I had to cry in the courtroom. Amen. I thank you for every tear I had to cry while I was in the hospital. Because it made me who I am. It gave me some authority that I came to understand. Amen. So I even learned now when the enemy comes against me to bind the enemy and say, look here, enemy, you have no control upon this earth. You have no control in my life. So I bind you right now, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I cast down at the stronghold every spirit of principalities right now. I cast you out of my house. I cast you off my job. I cast you from around me completely. I even learned to have patience with God. I know that everything has an expiration date. I don't care how bad the situation is. It's going to expire sooner or later. I don't care how good it seems. It's going to expire sooner or later. I don't care how sad you feel. Your sad day is going to expire sooner or later. I don't care how happy you feel right now. Your happiness gonna expire sooner or later but you know what one thing I'm glad I got joy because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength so even though I might be happy right now I still got joy the joy reminds me that the sun shall shine tomorrow the joy reminds me that God is still living
living. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. Therefore, the joy is part of the Lord. I'm here to tell somebody that God has not forgotten about you. Hallelujah. Understand that it's okay to cry sometimes. It's okay to struggle sometimes. You know, it's good to have a good heart. I was reminded of a story. One day, I was riding down the car, down the street in the car of my aunt. And we saw a young man walking down the street. It was the winter time. It was cold. Amen. And we know because it was winter and the heat was on in the car. We began to ride down the highway. It was a young man. He didn't have a coat on. And he was walking and he was shivering. He was walking and he was cold. He was walking and he was freezing. So the Lord told me, turn around and give him your jacket. I said, Lord, but it's cold out here. The Lord says, turn around. So he turned around. And I gave the man my jacket. I don't know what this young man is. But I know that God told him to do something in his life. 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you and I. He died not because he wanted to, because he had to. He already accepted the position to die for you and I. He died for our sins. If it had not been for him, we don't know where we would be. But we thank God for sending his son for you and I. He came, he died, but he rose on the third day. And he set aside the heavenly father, interceding on our behalf. That's why I learned to give praises to God, to give praises to Jesus. If it had not been for either or, we wouldn't be here right now. But I'm humble myself. And I say thank you, Lord. I humble myself. And I say thank you, Jesus. I humble myself. And I give reverence to what reverence is due. And I humble myself. And I understand that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. I humble myself. And I understand that the saints of God has a plan. And the saints of God has a purpose. That purpose is to go in the head of the highways and save the ones who are lost. That purpose is to not rest in the Lord, but to go forth and do what God has called us to do. That word of God is telling us to make disciples of men. And you got to understand that even though you rest sometimes, God still has a purpose for you. And that purpose is for you to go out to the head of the highways and make disciples. I patiently endure in what you need now. So when you continue to do God's will, then you will receive that which is his promise to you. Are you tired of waiting on something? Stand up your God some praise. When the praises go up, you open the door. Pray is the key and the faith unlocks the door. Pray is the key and the faith unlocks the door. I may not see it now, but I will shout. But I know that God is going to fix it for me. I will live in testimony about what God can do. I will live in testimony about how God can open the door. I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. Are you a seeker after the Lord? Wave your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord is seeking for those who are seeking after him. Ooh, amen. The reason I say this Ooh, in my Lord. closing, Jonah tried to run from the, the plan of God. Well, he thought he was running from the plan. Jonah thought he was running from God. Jonah said, you know what, God, I ain't going to do what you told me to do because they might kill me. They might do what they got. No, 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 I'm not going. So Jonah says, Father, I love you, but look, I ain't going. So Jonah says, I'm going to run. Jonah went and got that ticket, got on that boat. Jonah said, I'm gone. But how many know you can't run from the plan of God? And Amen. the enemy... Oh, hallelujah. 
And the enemy can't run from God either. God told the enemy to, whatever God, you know what? Whatever been held back, we release the name of Jesus. I said, look, Lord, this week has been a blessed week for me. I mean, I mean, I, God blesses every day, but this week, God's been blessing every day. I opened my mailbox yesterday and received another blessing from God. I said, well, thank you, Jesus. I'm playing that box every single day. Now I'm going to morning, I'm going to afternoon, and in the evening. I'm touching that. I'm saying, neighbor, these I receive what I get out But Jonah tried to run from God. And he ran. He ran on his boat and began to lead. But God called a storm. God called the wind. God says, man, I need you to go to and fro because I got somebody trying to run from me and I need him. I got a plan for him. Then Jesus says, I need the lightning. I need the lightning to come on now because I need you. I need you to come on and show this, this man that I need him. God can call a problem in our life in order for us to turn back to him. Amen. He called the wind. God called the lightning. God called the water to. And then Jonah now I'm sleeping in the storm. There's been times I had to I slept in storms, but I don't know if I can sleep on the boat while the storm is going. Amen. Jonah is asleep. Then Jonah was wakened by the captain. So I need everybody to pray to your God. Who is your God? Who is your God? Pray to your God. Jonah, who is your God? Oh, well. God we serve. Because our testimony can be our breakthrough. So Jonah Amen. is now having to make a decision. I pray to my God or do I just be going to spoke. Jonah was so embarrassed and so foolish that he'd rather be throwing off the boat than to just say, God, I repent for all my wrongs. How foolish can we be that we'd rather keep running from God this is to say, God, please forgive me for my wrongdoing. Why is it so hard for us as individuals to just go back to where we to where we did wrong and say, look, I'm sorry for what I had you. I'm sorry for what I said to you. I'm sorry for how I hurt you. Because that was not the will of God. So Jonah now is thrown off this boat. And we know the story of Big Fish came and ate him. But it didn't destroy Jonah, but it gave Jonah time to think about what he had done. And God told the fish to let Jonah back out. But Jonah had to do what God had called him to do. Amen. It's just better to say sorry sometimes than to just go on with life. Jonah could have expired that day, but God didn't let him expire. God had a plan that needed to be fulfilled in his life. If God has a plan for your life, He cannot stop until it's already fulfilled. Amen. Let us pray this morning. We thank you, Lord Heavenly Father, for the day you have made. We thank you, Lord, for helping us day by day. We thank you, Lord, for just giving us another chance. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us all for our sins, whether it was a word, a thought, or a deed. We ask you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for your anointing to flow from heart to heart. We ask you, Lord, to give us favor with man. Give us favor in our going. Give us favor in our coming. We bind the enemy right now over every hindrance, everything that's held up, jammed up, we bind it to me right now. And we call it to be released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We know, Lord, you said calm things as though they were. You said have faith, be sure to see. We have a faith right now. We're coming together on one accord with asking you, Lord, to release whatever you have for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
We decree and declare that it is done. It is so in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to give us just give us favor. Yes, Lord. Favor can take us a long way. Favor so that men give unto us. We decree and declare that we are blessed and not stressed. We are above and not beneath. We'll be the lender and not the borrower. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. I've been going and coming all week, and I haven't had that much rest this week. But the Lord has been my strength, amen, in my fever need, amen. He has been my strength.